Hello, Forecaster here again, and we are back for episode 76 of the Railcraft server Let's Play. And um, the reactor is offline uh, because we are going to make a bit of an improvement to it. Uh, now I'm going to have to go over to the... Uh, to the old base to get some stuff. So, a while ago, it was a few weeks ago now, someone in the uh, Open Computers uh, channel uh, pointed out that the uh, reactor manager will manage the reactor properly when it's running. And I did make it so that when you shut it down, it makes sure to shut down the reactor but if the program fails for some other reason or let's say the computer shuts down uh, for whatever reason or doesn't start up when the server starts up which does happen sometimes uh, if it just so happened that the signal that uh, lets the reactor run was on at that time it would remain on uh, which would keep the reactor running, which is not a good thing. Um, so then the reactor would run continuously either until someone comes and shuts it off or restarts the program properly or something like that. And that could potentially be bad. So I came up with a solution to that, which is um, which involves Super Circuit Maker. And we're going to need an Ender Pulsar. If I don't I already have some of those, we're going to need one of those. And we are going to need a subtractor, which you can get from an adder, which I happen to have, fortunately. So it's almost like I planned this, but I didn't. And we're going to need a lever and I'm going to take one red or one miniature lamp and then the bunch of tiny redstone and that should do uh, levers I have we need that as well so I've made a couple of changes to the program uh, in how it uh, outputs the redstone. Instead of outputting a continuous uh, signal that will keep the reactor on, it's going to emit a pulse every loop um, while the reactor is allowed to run. And instead of having that signal feed directly to the reactor, we're going to put a circuit in between that I have designed in creative ahead of time. Uh, so you're not going to get to see that process, but I'm going to build it now and show you how it works. So behind this redstone block, redstone IO block here, we have a redstone port for the reactor. And I'm going to steal that. So we're going to have to dis disassemble the reactor a little bit, fortunately. The reactor inside keeps the contents intact, which is nice. Um, and we're going to move this. Now, the this side right here... Oh, there's a zombie inside of the reactor. A cyber, cyber zombie, in fact. Or even. Um, there we go. Got the stuff in there. I don't know if it dropped anything. Eh, apparently not. No. Okay. So, this redstone IO block used to input or output a signal directly into the redstone uh, port. But... We need to move that out of the way so we can put the circuit in between, of course. And we need to 
put it, we can put it on the corner. Let's see, um, that's not allowed. Let's put, we're going to put this back here. Are we going to put one of these in the corner here? So, don't really want to put it below. We're going to need some more space than that. And this is a little congested. So, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here. And then just have sticky redstone come around the corner. So, we're going to do that. And then, oh, I had less of this than I thought. Also, I probably should have put it one block away because this is not going to connect around the corner. Shoot. Well, I'm going to get more of that. I accidentally broke that. Not that that is going to remain there, but uh, oh, I don't want that. So let's pop back to the base and make more redstone paste, which is just slime and uh, redstone. Unfortunately, I don't have any slime over here. Uh, I don't think I really have much in the way of redstone either. Well, I do, actually. Anyway. Um, so basically, the circuit is designed to maintain an output signal for a certain number of seconds. And it can be reset by uh, receiving a pulse on the input side. Oh. Dang. I think I used all of my slime balls for Grog. And I don't really have any way of getting more of those because I have gotten them from other people. Unless I happen to have some somewhere, which I don't think I do. I can't get any from that. Damn. I wonder if this works. I don't think I can actually... No, you can't put that on the wall. Which is kind of stupid. Uh... It is a work in progress, though, I guess. Um, hmm. Well, that's annoying. I mean, I do have some sticky redstone or redstone paste on the wall outside of the smeltery here. I'm just going to grab this. Because surely we won't need this anyway, because I'm going to be moving the smeltery into the new base. So we're just going to take this, I mean borrow, from myself. Well, I guess I'm stealing it because I'm not going to put it back. So I'm stealing from myself. Yeah. Right. So now we can get this up and running. Uh, I do have a screwdriver. We do need that to adjust the um, the components a little bit. Okay. So we're going to move this one more block to the left, and we're going to put it there, put that there, reactor should be fine again, and then we are going to put the 
circuit. We're going to put it on the floor first. We'll build it on the floor and we'll put it put it in place later. So then we're going to put it like that. And then we're going to put a piece there. And then the circuit's going to go there. So uh, the circuit has one input side and one output side. The input side has two input lines, so to speak. Um, and we need a toggle latch, we need a lever there. And I don't have a button, I can grab the one that is next to the uh, screen over there. So and we're going to put a redstone lamp somewhere on here, I guess. Don't really need, I realize don't really need it on the output because you can tell that when that is working because it will power the redstone paste. Um, anyway, so we have an input here and an input here. Then we're going to put the subtractor uh, here and the input is going to be there. Then it's going to output here and we're going to have another input here which is going to be subtracted from this input. I'm going to explain why I'm doing this shortly. And then the final piece is going to be this. Um, uh, Ender Pulsar, which is a timer, basically. So this we're going to set to two seconds for now. Now this is being powered by this lever, keeping it off. So it's not going to pulse. Um, however, we also don't have a signal here currently. So any signal that gets input here is going to go through this subtractor because nothing is being subtracted. Zero is being subtracted technically. Um, it will go into this lever and toggle it over to that. Now, you notice that this line turned on, so it's going to power the output, which would power, which would turn on the reactor. And then it's also powering the subtractor, which is subtracting the full signal strength um, from this. So any th signal that is input here, while this is being powered, is going to be neutralized. So it's not going to be allowed to toggle a latch. Um, now, when the latch is toggled onto the output, it's not powering the ender pulsar. So the ender pulsar, pulsar when the signal goes away, will start to pulse. So at, at tens or um, two seconds, I mean, after this has been toggled, uh, this will send out a signal to which will toggle it back off, as you can see, which is what happens when we turn this on, it turns off two seconds later. However, and this will also happen when you toggle when you pulse the input, of course, because of how this works. So currently, nothing is being, uh, this is not being blocked. So sending a pulse here will toggle it, and then the timer will toggle it off again. Uh, but if I keep doing this, I keep pulsing the timer or the ender pulsar, resetting it each time, resetting the counter so that it doesn't turn the latch off again until I stop and leave it off. Then two seconds later, the ender pulsar will send out a pulse, which will toggle the circuit off again which will terminate the reactor. So the base, the uh, whole point of this, of course, is that the uh, reactor manager will send out a pulse uh, 
every second, which will keep this circuit outputting a redstone signal. However, if the program fails and the computer doesn't turn on uh, or it stops for some reason, uh, it will stop sending out pulses and then the circuit will terminate the reactor. Uh, now keeping the input on, there is a slight point of failure here and that is if the program happens to fail or uh, if the computer gets shut down right when the, uh, in the middle of that pulse. The pulse is just for a second um, and I may increase or decrease the frequency of the pulses but I'm not sure because I would have to do that separately from the uh, interface updating stuff. Uh, so it would require some additional complicated or it would require complicating the code a little bit to decrease the uh, frequency of the pulses without decreasing the frequency of the loops which would make the um, the interface updates slower including the um, the clients because the server data needs to be updated frequently to be able to send it out to the clients. So I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, but you see how how it works. So we're going to grab this, put it there and rotate. Whoops. Did not want to disconnect that. Now we are going to pop into here and I need the floppy disk. My trusty program disk. We're going to have a look at the code changes I've made and then we're going to commit them and uh, then download them on the computer as usual. So. Here we have the reactor manager, and I've changed um, this function here. So before we had, if the state is true, meaning the reactor is on, uh, it would turn the signal on. If it's false, it would turn it off. Now I have changed it so that it will turn it on if the state is true, and then wait one second, and then um, it's going to turn it off again, which will create a pulse for um, one second, which I realize will actually hold the program here for one second. So each loop will actually be two seconds uh, because you have this, um, this sleep plus this sleep, uh, unless the reactor is actually off in which case it will skip this sleep, so it will update more frequently when the reactor is not running, which is a bit weird, actually. Um, hmm. it, it, it'll work, however, so it doesn't matter all that much, I don't think. Um, so yeah, I also changed... Uh, didn't I... No, I didn't change anything else. I was considering changing how it works with the overheating, uh, which is why I was focused down here. Uh, if the heat, the reactor heat level is above 2%, uh, it will set it into overheating stage, which will shut everything. And I was considering changing it so that it doesn't close the pipes or the, the coolant outputting pipe. But I decided against that uh, because it, it, I felt it was unnecessary ultimately because it's not really going to be overheating much. Uh, it was because in the test world I managed to have it fill up the internal hot coolant storage tank in the reactor but when I was testing the circuit. But that wasn't the program's fault. That will probably almost never happen or it should, should never happen with when the reactor manager is running properly. 
uh, or otherwise really. So let's commit this and need to stop blabbing about random stuff. Changes I don't make unless I don't make them for a good reason. Uh, let's see. I actually don't need the dash because I'm going to, I'm only going to have one line. Let's see. Um, uh, change to pulse output. That'll do. And then commit and push, which I wish I could set as the default. That would be nice. Right. Let's pop back into the game. I need to get the URL for the file again. And copy that. And then we're going to go into the floppy disk first. There. Just have a bunch of stuff here. And then we'll get this. And I made no changes to the client so that it does not need to be updated. And then we're going to cut that line there. And then we're going to put the disk drive there, put the floppy disk in there. And then we're going to copy from mount there, reactor clients to re reactor, no, not reactor clients. Dang it. Did that again. Want to copy the reactor manager. There we go. And then we can. Uh, Restore that as as always. Not really any change in the process there. And then we can run the reactor manager. Oh right, wait. Uh, we also need to edit the settings file because it's not going to output to the south anymore. It's going to output on the east side of the uh, power output because that's where the redstone is. So we're going to say east here. Otherwise, it's not going to do much. And it's offline currently. I guess because the tank level is high enough and the power level is high enough. It's not going to run it. Uh, let's let's change this to three seconds so that we don't have any flickering unnecessarily. Because I don't like that. Things flicker. Um, hmm. Don't really have a huge need for power right now. I don't have anything to dump power into. Which is a bit unfortunate because I would have liked to see this or show this running. Hmm. Ah, uh, well, I don't really know what to do. I mean, I guess I could take out hot coolant. That would, that should trigger it, make it run. So, there we go. And there you can see the pulses. And then if I cut this off, so it's still pulsing, 
but the circuit isn't receiving it, so it will shut off. And then I am going to actually shut it off. So I can put the coolant back into the tank. Actually, can I? No, you can only put empty cells in there. Right. It's not really going to use this, is it? Until it needs power. Hmm. Well, I'm I'll I'll put this back eventually. Um I guess I could put it here. Although that would cause it to run to don't don't really want that to run unnecessarily. Uh I should have a um refractory hopper here that I can put into uh, any extra I might do that so we'll dump it into this tank when there's room um, but yeah that's that change and in the next episode we'll get back on the um, uh, smelting or processing system and the smelting the casting thing uh, still need to upgrade that computer so that you can handle more components and we'll get the or processing machines set up and with that I'll see you then